welcome back. This is going to be the last video in this series. In the last video, we created some effects, a splash effect and the bubble particle. So I'm going to start out this video by closing out our meta layout and meta event sheet. We no longer need those. And over on our layout tab, I am going to click on our water object. And this is placed on our water layer. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and lock our collisions layer as well. With the water object selected, over here in the properties, we have edit effects. I'm going to add a new effect. And I'm just gonna start typing in water. We have water background and water. I'm just gonna go with water. And this is a built-in effect. Uh, I think it works pretty well for what we're trying to achieve. So by default, this is what we have. And right away, we can tell that as we distort this object, we're going to have some exposed areas on the side and the bottom. So since this water is on the water layer and the water layer is behind the collisions, our collisions for this project is acting as our art. I don't have a tile set going. I'm just gonna use the collisions as our ground art, but it is covering our water. So we can actually just expand our water to the left, to the right, and down uh, equal amounts. Okay, let's go over here to the properties and let's set a few things. If we left it like it is now, we can play this. And uh, it looks a bit watery, but it looks like a flowing river or maybe even kind of like a flag. I'm going to exit out of that. First off, I'm going to drop the X speed and the Y speed both down to zero. I just don't think we're going to need those. Click on the angle. It tells us down here the angle of the waves. Uh, an angle of seven, I'm going to dial that down to an angle of five. And I'll leave that delta right there. The reflectivity is something you can play around with if you want. Uh, I don't care for it. Uh, we could do like a 100 where it's kind of barely noticeable, but I really just don't want it at all. So I'm gonna leave mine at zero, and then let's play that. Let's see what we got. So it's wavy, but um, it's kind of weird. It slows down and then speeds up, and it looks like it's just expanding and contracting. Let's go with uh, the frequency. Let's double this to eight. What do we got? Okay, I like this, uh, but you see we have a little bit of kind of almost looks like artifacting where it angles over itself. I'm just going to tone down the emboss from 30 down to 20. So I, for me, I, I like this. This is uh, active enough, but it doesn't go overboard. And it's not going to be a constant visual thing on our screen. It's only going to last for a few seconds at a time. So this works for me. Feel free to play around with these values. This is what I'm going with. Actually, we can bump the speed up. Uh, let's double that. Make that go a little faster. There we go. That's like if you just jumped in and the waves are kind of bumping into each other. I'll do that. This is what I have. Uh, let's go back over to the event sheet. Go ahead and save while we're thinking about it. And I'm going to close this group up for right now. We will need to go back into it. I right click in a blank area and add a new group. And I'm going to call this waves. So I'm going to need a way to determine how high the waves are because I want this to be straight and calm when we are outside of the water. And then when he jumps in, it gets all crazy. And then I want it to slowly go back to calm. So when we jump in, I want it to build up real quick and then over a period of time, the waves get less and less and less until it's just a straight line across. So if we look at our waves here, our, our water object, we can change the intensity down to zero and that'll work. But what we're really wanting to control is the curviness of the sprite. And that's what emboss is. Emboss basically means the curves of an object. So if we have 20%, if we drop that down to zero, it's nothing. 
And if we bumped it up to, oh, that's a lot. If we bumped it up to 50, you know, it gets curvier. But we want our maximum to be that 20%. So with that in mind, we need a way to control this value. And we're going to use an instance variable of the water sprite to control it. So with this selected, let's go to edit instance variables, add a new variable, and I'm going to call this wave height, all one word, and it's going to be a number. Okay, let's go over to the event sheet, and I want to have our emboss parameter read this variable at all times. Let's add an event to waves, go into system, and I want every tick. I want this to read this value and plug it into this emboss parameter. So let's add an action and go into our water object and we want that effect. And under our appearance section, we have set effect parameter. So let's click on that and it asks us for the name of the effect in between quotation marks. And it's over here, it's water. We wanna spell it exactly how it is. So capital W a T E R in quotation marks. And this says parameter index. And it tells you up here that it's zero based, meaning it starts at zero for the first parameter. One is the second and so on. So we can go over here and count these. So speed is zero, X speed is one, Y speed is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Emboss is the eighth parameter. And it's actually the ninth parameter, but we started at zero. So parameter number eight is the index we want to change. And the value we want to give it is this wave height instance variable. So let's get our water object dot, and we want that wave height variable. So every frame of the game, so 60 times every second, it's going to read off what this value is and set it to parameter eight, which is emboss. Now we need a way to turn the waves on and turn the waves off. So let's add another instance variable to our water object. Add new variable, and I'm gonna call this, uh, just call it waves, and change the type to a Boolean. That just means true or false. So let's add an event to waves, go into our water object, and scroll down to our variables, and say, is Boolean instance variable set? That means, is it true? And that's the variable waves. So if waves is true, then we can set up uh, some code here. And everything that I want to happen while waves is true is gonna go underneath it in a sub event. Make sure this whole block is highlighted. B on the keyboard gives us a blank sub event. And I wanna check to see where this 20% emboss value is. And we're gonna do that through the wave height variable. So if we double click to go into this and get our water object, let's compare an instance variable, wave height. And I wanna know if it's less than the full amount, which is 20. So if our waves is set to true, as long as this wave height variable is at a value less than 20, I want to increase the value until it gets to 20. So let's add an action, go into our water object, uh, add to, and I want it to go pretty quickly. I want it to build pretty quickly. So I'm gonna add two to that value. So I'm gonna go here to our layout to show uh, what I wanna do next. When we jump in, I want that wave system to build up and then it's going to start calming down as long as there's no movement. So we jump in, waves get big, and then they slowly get smaller and smaller. So I wanna know over here on our event sheet, once we get to this 20, we keep adding until we get to 20. When we get to 20, I wanna start decreasing it. So if we highlight this whole block and B on the keyboard to add another sub event, let's double click to go into it, get our water and come down here to compare instance variables and check this number again. This time I wanna know if it is equal to or greater than 20. That's our maximum. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that this code, all of this code can no longer run. And we'll do that by changing this to false. So add an action to that, go into water, and go to set boolean waves to false. 
We jump in the water. Waves is true. We add 2 until we get to 20. Once we get to 20, we now know it's at 20. We can set this to false. All of this code will no longer run. We can set up new code. So let's add an event to waves group. Go into water and go down to is boolean instance variable set. Waves. Hit done. And just highlight this event right here and hit I to invert that. It gives us a little X. So now we have waves is true and waves is false. So if waves is false, I want to start subtracting from this 20 value. And I only want it to happen as long as waves is false. So let's highlight this whole block of code. B for a sub event. Double click to go into it. Go into water. Scroll down to compare instance variable. And I want to know if our wave height instance variable is greater than zero. As long as it's more than zero, I want to start subtracting until it gets to zero. So let's add an action, go into water, scroll down to subtract from. We want to subtract from that wave height instance variable. And I'm going to make it pretty subtle. So I'm going to go 0 0.1. Okay, now we need to decide when this gets set to true. Because by default, our waves boolean variable is false. And then it gets set to false here again. So the only time that it gets set true is going to be when we come in contact with our water object. So in our overlapping water event here, we have all of these sub events. And down here, we already have a situation where we trigger once while true. And that's what I want to do because if we have it up here, let's say if we put it underneath this one where our overlapping check is, it will constantly be setting it to true. And down here, this false will never take place. It will always be true because it'll never be able to get out of it because we will currently be overlapping the water. So if we put it in our trigger once while true, it'll only set it once. In this block of code, let's add an action, go into water, scroll down to set boolean, waves to true. I'm going to close that up. Let's test that out real quick. Okay. There's our waves. And then they calm down. If I jump up and re-enter the water, they splash again. They calm. It's calm. It's crazy. It starts calming. So, everything working pretty good so far. Uh, I have one other thing we could do. A very subtle issue. It's really up to your discretion if you want to do this or not. Here where our waves is true, once we get to this wave height of 20, before we start subtracting in this event, I'm just going to wait just like half a second. So let's add an action to this. Go into system, wait, and I'm going to go 0 0.5, half a second. And I'm going to move that to the top of that block. So once we reach 20 by adding 2 every tick of the game, we get to 20, we check for 20, we wait half a second, and then we set waves to false, and then we can start subtracting. This is going to be a very subtle change, but it just lets the waves splash around just a little bit longer, and if you want them to splash even longer, you can change that. Okay. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and save that really quick. One last little effect and we will be done with this. When our player jumps into the water, I want this kind of wavy look, like you would see something uh, underwater and the distortion that happens in between our eyes and the surface of the water can uh, kind of make things look or reflect in a wavy pattern. So just a cool little effect we can add to this project. I'm going to come over here to our layers panel and I'm going to right click and add a layer, edit whichever direction you want. And I'm going to call this warp. And I'm going to move it in between water and player. So I'm going to move our player just for right now. If we click on it and move it to the warp layer, we'll be able to see this effect. So make sure warp is selected in the layouts 
come over to the properties and edit effects, add a new effect, and I'm going to type in warp, and I want warp layout. And immediately we see the distortion that has occurred. Uh, it's a little, little much for my taste, so we will mess with some of the parameters of warp. So make sure you have the warp selected in the layout, and we can tone some of this stuff down, like the X from 60 down to 50, the Y down to 50 as well. I'm gonna take the X amplitude down to 1.5. Same with the Y. And X and Y speed, I'll just leave like that. And if we play, there's our warp effect. Uh, I like it. Again, feel free to mess with any of these values and uh, see if there's a different effect you want to come up with. And that should be good. Uh, I'm going to click on our player and move him back to the player layer because we don't want him warped on the outside of, of the water. Okay, back in the event sheet, let's close up our waves group and open our states back up. And down here in our overlapping water event, come in this first event up here, overlapping water. Let's add an action to that. Go into our player and all the way down to the bottom, we have move to layer. And I'm going to just type in the name of that layer in quotation marks is warp. It will not work if you don't have it in between quotation marks and spelled exactly how it is in your layouts panel. That will move us to that layer. So now we have that warp effect. However, when we jump out, we're still all wibbly wobbly. So let's change ourselves back to our player layer when we get out of the water, which is in this else statement. So else Let's add an action to that player. Scroll down to the bottom, move to layer, in quotation marks, player. Okay. Looks good. All our effects are taking place. And we are not warped anymore and our water calms down and everything looks like it is working. Pretty good. All right, that is the end of this video and the end of this series. I hope you found something useful out of it and that is going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.